All right, welcome back to today's class about helping your clients through an auction. So uh, uh, let's keep moving and talk about the styles of auctions and the types of auctions that there are, okay? Well, first of all, there are several different common styles that we're going to discuss. Uh, most everybody has either been to or seen or heard of an auction. And you go out and you stand and there's some guy up front that's going, ah, sold, all right? Well, that is certainly one type of auction that we're going to be dealing with. So in the course of most real estate auctions, the most common and the most open and transparent auction is what they call the English auction, the English one. Now, sometimes you hear it called the round robin, which is the one that you guys are probably most familiar with. It's a process of selling real estate uh, where the low, they open the bid with a low price and then they just keep increasing the bid amount by another bidder until the highest bid is received and nobody overbids that. And they can continually bid until everybody drops out and eventually there's one left. All right. Now, the English auction is probably the best one because of the transparency. And what I mean by this is this allows all of the buyers to actually be there and witness what other buyers are doing. So they know, hey, I've got to raise my bid because I literally heard another guy making a higher bid, okay? So that's the English auction or the round robin. The other one that we're going to talk about is what's called a sealed bid auction. A sealed bid auction is where basically all bidders simultaneously bid at the same time, and there is typically like a time limit that it has to happen. Now, the bad thing about a sealed bid is it's a one-shot kind of deal. Matter of fact, sometimes you hear, will hear it called a one-shot auction. They also call it a blind auction. Now, the reason they call it a blind auction is because with it being sealed, you have no concept of what another buyer may be bidding. All right? So you can only bid what is your valuation. If it gets outbid, then it gets outbid, and there is no second chance, like in the English auction, where you can raise your bid. So you have the English auction, which is open and transparent, and then you have the sealed bid, which is blind to all of the other bidders, but they all come in at the same time. Now, one of the things that they talk about or we have discussed is this whole concept of highest and best auction. There's a highest and best, which technically, if you think about it, is basically what we do with the real estate world is when we get a bunch of offers in, we will call the other clients or email the other agents, misspoke and say, hey, look, I've got multiple offers. We want your highest and best. In essence, you are creating a sealed bid kind of auction or that blind bid kind of auction because the other, let's say, buyer number two has no idea what buyer number one is bidding. So it becomes that blind type of auction that we have to deal with, all right? Now, there are some other common types of auctions, all right? We talked about the style, and those are the two most common. Uh, and there's all kinds of, there's a Dutch auction, there's uh, an Indonesian auction, there's all kinds. But the English and the blind bid are the most common. Now, as far as the type of auction, um, these are different, like, subcategories that could be of each one. For instance, you have the absolute auction. The absolute auction is probably one of the buyer's favorite auctions 
because in an absolute auction, there's technically no minimum. There's no minimum bid. The property will be sold to the highest bidder regardless of the price. All right. So that means whatever the highest price is, that's what it's called. So in the absolute auction, typically it has no reserve. All right. So somebody highest bidder bids a thousand bucks. That's what the house goes for. Now, the other time of that is a minimum bid auction. Now, a minimum bid auction is very similar to an absolute auction, although there is a predetermined price that the buyer will accept. If the bids meet that predetermined price or above, then the house gets sold. All right. It's it's absolute in that someone will sell, but that has to meet that minimum bid. OK, so they come in and they may start the bidding and say 100 grand. Well, the buyer has said, well, the minimum bid is go or the minimum acceptable price is going to be 150. Typically, they don't disclose that because once they start at 100, they get everybody in that frenzy going. They want you to keep going. And then once it passes that 150 mark, now the auctioneer will say something usually like, we have reached the minimum, so now the property will be sold. Consequently, if they don't reach the minimum and say they bid 100, 100, 100, and they get 110, uh, they may say, hey, folks, we haven't reached the minimum bid yet. Uh, we got to keep going or this house is going to be taken off the auction block. All right. Now, there's also what this called the reserve auction. The reserve auction is not absolute insofar as even if the highest bidder wins, the seller still has the right to refuse the offer, whatever it is. All right. So if they say it's a reserve auction and the winning bid's only 120, the seller may say, sorry, I'm not accepting that bid. I really uh, wanted something higher. So basically that auction is off the block or that property's off the block. Even though we technically had a winner of the auction, the house is not going to be sold in that manner. Uh, okay. Sealed bid auctions. We talked about a sealed bid auction is confidential. Typically they're submitted by the agent and they're submitted all at a predetermined time frame and they're opened all at a predetermined time frame. Now there are some advantages to a sealed bid. One of the advantages is for a sealed bid is if there tends to be a lot of people and there are a lot of heavy hitters or big name buyers that could intimidate lesser buyers to drop out of the competition. So the sealed bid allows them to be anonymous, all right? Once again, it's back to the term, the blind bid. Then the last one uh, we're gonna discuss is what's called a multi-parcel auction. Marta, a multi-parcel auction is used exactly what it sounds like. If there's multiple pieces of real estate that are going up for sale, when the winner of one auction wins one of the bids, it allows him to then combine other bids or other properties into one bid so that some other person would have to bid against both of them. Uh, and recently I went to an auction here in Nashville, Indiana, where there were 17 parcels up for sale. And if you won the bid and they went through and they did one bid for each parcel, then they went back and took the winners and said, would you be interested in bidding on another parcel as a combination? And if it did, it had the total had to surpass the total of both the winning bids. So in other words, if you had one at 20 and they had one and another parcel was at 70 and you wanted to combine these two, you would have to offer greater than 90,000 for both parcels. All right. It's called a multi-parcel bid. 
All right, so we've talked about the styles, the English and the sealed bid, and then we talked about the types, and typically you're going to see absolute or a reserve auction. Uh, reserves a lot of times because the buyer just, or the seller know there's going to be a limit that he has to have. So that is the section that's covering the styles and the types of auctions. So if you've got any questions on this section, feel free to email me at Raymond at real university.com and we can uh, answer your questions. All right. So hold on. We'll be right back. <laughs> 